Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Mike Anderson. My guest this week is waterfall biologist Mike Szymanski. Mike, you and your crews just finished your spring breeding duck survey. Tell our viewers what the breeding duck survey is and how you conduct the survey. That's right, Mike. We are fresh out of the out of the survey here. Uh, still, still uh, compiling numbers for reports and everything, but we've got a, a good look at the data now, and uh, things are looking pretty good. Our, our survey is it's a pretty big survey. We run it state statewide on eight transects that run north and south from the South Dakota border up to the Canadian border. Some of them stop just a little bit short on either end, but. It's, uh, it's about 1,820 miles long overall, and we survey about 454 square miles in that survey. Um, we've been doing it since 1948. It's the 72nd year of the survey, so it's what we believe to be the longest running uh, breeding waterfowl population survey that's done on a large scale, probably in the world. Uh, so it's a very unique data set. Um, and we're pretty proud of what we got here in North Dakota. So when you're doing these surveys, you guys stop at every wetland? Yeah, we drive along the survey route. We've got a driver, an observer, a data recorder, a two-man crew basically going along, checking out every wetland, uh, counting every wetland basin that has water in it. And then while we're doing that, we're also counting the, the ducks, speciating them, and breaking down their social groups. So we're talking about whether or not we see a mallard pair or a mallard drake sitting by itself or maybe two mallard drakes and a hen sitting around together and we use that information to help uh, break down what the expanded duck total is because a lot of hens are nesting right now so a, a drake mallard sitting by itself is going to be indicative of uh, a pair but the hen is off nesting and, and we did see a fair a fair bit of nesting already in place this year we've seen a few duck broods already too but uh, yeah, there was a, a very strong nesting effort already going on during our survey. Mike, how are the wetlands holding up? Yeah, conditions were definitely on the downhill swing the last couple of years. Even last summer and fall, we were, we were drying up quite a bit. As we moved into uh, late winter, uh, we started getting a little bit more precip, a little bit more precip, and then we started getting some fairly big storms that rolled through a few areas of the state. So, um, interestingly, our overall wetland index is right about average but we have a lot of variation between regions in the state where some areas are extremely wet very good wetland conditions and other areas of the state are really quite dry um, usually we don't have that hard of a line I guess going through the state but kind of uh, just going up the eastern the far eastern edge of the state the far eastern edge of the drift prairie uh, we do have very good wetland conditions up and down all the way uh, north to south along that edge and then it kind of curls around down where the the southern tier um, in the central part of the state is in pretty good shape uh, mostly south i-94 and then it kind of um, you know it's okay going up north and then the north central part is really quite dry and they're actually uh, you know as we're talking now in in some moderate drought conditions and uh, it looks like the northwest part of the state got a few shots of rain um, and late snow e enough to kind of keep things stable so th there is a lot of a lot of variation right now in our conditions but uh, you know where it looks good it looks really good you said you had a chance to look at the data what are you finding out yeah like I mentioned our, our wetland counts are, are right right around the long-term average with some areas being uh, quite quite good and some areas being quite poor our duck numbers are, are holding on to uh, Last couple of years, we were below 3 million birds this year. We popped back up above 3 million uh, breeding ducks in the state, so that's a, that's a nice sign. We're sitting right around 3.34 uh, million breeding ducks for our uh, state estimate. Um, our, our overall uh, breeding duck rank is about 22nd in the history of the survey, survey so that's also really good. Anytime we get up um, around 20 or higher in that rank, that means we're sort of in line with what we've um, been experiencing since our more recent wet uh, conditions began in 1994. Um, so that's really important to compare to that because it's sort of been the paradigm, maybe even the new norm going forward for a while. But 
Um, we're looking pretty good there. Our Mallard rank was about the 17th overall in the history of the survey, so that's also really good. Um, we've got a few species that maybe aren't doing as good comparatively to the last, uh, you know, 25-year period, those being uh, blueing teal, gadwall, and lesser scop, where their numbers were, were just a little bit lower than that uh, average. Um, but um, mostly, um, you know, with ducks being up overall about 16 percent, that's pretty good. I mean, it's, it's nice to see that bump back up, and we, we actually probably would have seen a bigger bump, but South Dakota is extraordinarily wet. And when ducks hit those kind of conditions moving north, especially blueing teal and pintails, they're gonna they're gonna stop there first. So uh, it's all right. They've got good conditions to breed in, and we'll add to the population overall. What do we use this data for, Mike? For us, it's to help us um, corroborate other surveys that go on. Uh, our regulations are actually set by a Fish and Wildlife Service survey, but having um, sort of this independent data set helps. Compare numbers, um, I mean, North Dakota is the most important state for breeding waterfowl in the U.S., so uh, it's good to have that kind of backup uh, data set going on. And it helps us kind of explain things to our constituents overall. And obviously our hunters want to have uh, some indication of what's going on now. And it helps us kind of look at what's going on regionally within our state. Um, you know, one, one thing that's important right now for us to consider is that although, I mean, we had a lot of ducks settle in the eastern part of the state uh, with very good wetland conditions, we might still have some hampered reproduction because that's, you know, an area that's lost a lot of CRP. We've lost a little over half of our CRP over the last uh, 10 years or so. And, you know, losing that type of habitat is going to hamper uh, production of ducks even though the wetland conditions are good. So we, you know, we got to keep an eye on things like that. A lot of good information, Mike. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Applicants for regular deer gun, youth, and muzzleloader seasons can apply online through the Game and Fish Department's website at gf.nd.gov or call 800-406-6409. The deadline for applying is Wednesday, June 5th. For waterfall biologist Mike Szymanski and the rest of the staff here at the Game and Fish Department, thanks for joining us for this week's Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.